feel ashamed that I've decided to make this video. I shouldn't have to. We as a community shouldn't be here. Since Halo Infinite's release, I've experienced many emotions. Excitement, frustration, anger, sadness. And most importantly of all, fatigue. Fatigued because we've been here before. Fatigued because we are once again discussing how to fix Halo. How to rectify the mistakes of old that have gone unnoticed yet again. Since Bungie left, we've experienced setback after setback. Infinite was supposed to remedy mistakes and get us all on the same page. Yet, here we are. With the bridge between 343 and the community on fire. After the failures of 4 and 5, many left for good. But those that stayed gave 343 one last chance to prove themselves, and they blew it. As much as I am annoyed and angered by the release of Halo Infinite, and the job that 343 Industries has done, they will nonetheless remain in charge of the franchise. So with that being said, let me, as best I can, explain to you, and to them, how to fix Halo. But what do we mean by fix? Infinite has boasted 20 million players since its release. The game has a score of 87 on Metacritic. Quite the success, one could say. It's true that popularity and critical reviews matter, but if your community is dissatisfied and your game loses a copious number of players after release, then something is not right. And critic scores are to be taken with a pinch of salt as ever. The game was receiving 9 out of 10s left, right and centre, whilst Reddit Halo was getting temporarily closed due to toxicity. So ultimately, we need a happy player base. A community that engages with the game in multiple ways, and a game that has enough weight to welcome new players through word of mouth. Still to this day, the best way to market a game. Once the community is happy, popularity will arrive straight away. And whilst critical approval isn't guaranteed, it's more likely than not. So to reiterate, community satisfaction and happiness is the number one priority. That's not to say, however, that we should always do what the community desires, because at the end of the day, we're gamers, and game designers know better. Well, at least they should. It's fine to go in one direction instead of another, as long as you can empathise with your audience, what they want, and where they're coming from. As long as you get Halo, as long as you understand the franchise and why it became so successful, any decision you make will be the right one. If 343 is to get Halo, however, they need to know what it is. This is an ambiguous debate because one person could think a feature is key for Halo, whereas another person will think the opposite. What's classified as quintessential Halo? What counts as too innovative, too different? Where do we draw the line? The vision that 343 has for Halo shapes the final game, and the main reason we, as a community, were dissatisfied with 4 and 5 is because that vision was not what we expected. So what is our expectation for Halo? If 343 are to listen to us, we need to be concise and clear with our feedback. Well, thankfully, Halo is an established franchise with plenty of examples. 343 took over after Bungie, and we can use their main titles, 1, 2, 3 and Reach, as inspiration. Without a doubt, these games had their issues. Repetitive level design in Combat Evolved, Balance difficulty in 2, paid DLC in 3, and armor abilities and bloom in Reach. However, across the board, these titles received ridiculous critical and commercial success, and this was undeniably the peak of the franchise. Many will be quick to point out that the decline of Halo coincided with the transfer of power between 343 and Bungie. Yet, empathising with 343, there were many other factors at play. Halo had just finished its trilogy, its story, 
and in essence required a new direction to get going again. That's tough, especially considering what came before it. The gaming landscape was also changing drastically. The new generation of consoles was coming in 2013, and Call of Duty was dominating with its Modern Warfare and Black Ops series. 343 felt that Halo had to innovate, that it had to move forward due to the risk of stagnation, and then they made Halo 4 and 5. And it took 343 until Infinite to realise their mistake, that they didn't need to innovate drastically or alienate its community, they just needed to keep going with the established formula. That's not to say that I'm not in favour of innovation. For example, 343's take on equipment in Infinite works beautifully. It goes back to getting Halo and its community. If that understanding is there between the two, any innovations you make will fit right in. 343 reverted to Halo's classic gameplay and art style in Infinite, and lo and behold, it's the most praised and celebrated aspect of the game. Favian explains this well in his video, that... Just a sliver of classic Halo gave Infinite 20 million players and critical acclaim. It casually triumphed over Vanguard and Battlefield 2042, and had people excited and talking about Halo for the first time in years. Just think of what a fully finished Infinite would have accomplished. Back to the problems at hand. We now know our foundation for fixing Halo. The next thing we need to consider is whether we feel the need to fix Infinite, or start developing a new game right away. Looking at Infinite's problems, it's hard to have any confidence that we could build the ideal Halo game within its parameters. Considering they didn't even have a Team Slayer playlist at launch due to UI constraints. I don't know if the pillars of Halo Infinite are strong enough to support the changes I'm about to discuss or if 343 has the capabilities to implement them. Having said that, 343 wants Infinite to last the next 10 years, so I have no choice but to focus on it. Halo Infinite took the bold step of creating an open world Halo game and unfortunately it doesn't work. Now, I don't think anyone here expected this to be on par with a Red Dead or God of War. After all, this was Halo's first foray into the open world genre. And I commend 343 for trying it, because like we've experienced with Combat Evolved, that level of openness suits Halo. However, I think it was a mistake to go full open world. The reason Combat Evolved clicked in its mission design, aside from the awesome AI and gameplay, was that it was a linear game that had the freedom to approach linear scenarios in different ways. Infinite is like one big mission, and I have to wonder why an open world design was chosen, but more importantly, stuck with. The one key fundamental we gain from it all is freedom. I can choose this mission first, or I can go over here and kill this boss or use this weapon. Yet I have to ask, how often in Combat Evolved did you feel as though you lacked freedom? Sure, the levels were linear and in a certain order, but the way you approach combat scenarios, the guns you use, the vehicles you drive, it's not like you were in an on-rails Call of Duty helicopter mission. And without a doubt, Infinite has moments where that freedom is utilised. But is that gain really worth the exclusion of linear missions with linear moments? The exploration initially seems extremely appealing. Driving over a crest of a hill, looking out into the distance, and hearing the spine-tingling music. It makes you want to spend your whole time exploring. Unfortunately, Infinite's exploration falls flat when you actually reach your destination, because it's just another squad of marines under fire, a propaganda tower, or an aesthetic feature of the map with no interactability. Never exploring Zeta Halo did I find anything unique or memorable, nothing to tell my friends about. There are a few collectibles such as skulls, some small easter eggs, and enemies. That's it. It only scratches the surface of what's possible. For example, my favourite moment exploring Red Dead 2's world 
was finding this shack that had a bear inside. A simple moment, all some developer had to do was place a bear inside this shack, and yet it was extremely memorable and engaging. The closest Infinite gets to something like this are the propaganda towers voiced by a grunt. Otherwise, it's quite repetitive and gets boring fast. I feel like I'm exploring an alpha version of this world, like I'm waiting for it to be populated and finished. And unfortunately, it's clear to see it simply isn't finished. And as we mentioned, we miss out on linear moments as a result. The beach landing in Combat Evolved, the island has multiple structures and installations. One of them contains the map room. We're approaching the LZ. It's gonna be hot. Get them to come out quick. Touchdown! Hit it, Marines! Go, go, go! The floating gondolas of Halo 2. The Ford Unto Dawn entering the atmosphere in Halo 3. Or the space battles of Long Night of Solace in Halo Reach. Echo 2, good to go. Echo 3, system screen. Echo 4, all systems online. Solid copy. We are currently jamming the Corvette's comms. Hit it hard while it can't call for help. Moments like these are missing from Infinite because of its lack of linearity and reliance on repetitive level design. We needed a much wider variety of locations too. Infinite consists of a verdant forest biome and an interior forerunner aesthetic. Contrast that with previous Halos and other linear shooters, and the difference is night and day. And as we mentioned, these locations, particularly the forerunner areas, lack variety in design, with some rooms even being duplicated. It's no wonder the only level in Infinite that was memorable to me was the road, and the firefight-esque battle inside Eshram's outpost. They felt different to experience than any other mission. Infinite's open world also creates another problem. If the player has such a wide variety of abilities, weapons, and vehicles to choose from, they'll more often than not resort to a few safe and favoured options. You ideally don't want your player running into every room with a battle rifle and shotgun grappling all over the place. A great example of this working the opposite way is the second boss fight. You're tasked with killing an invisible elite with an energy sword, utilising a threat sensor before you go in, and thus you play differently. Instead of grappling around as you've been for the past few hours, you stay rigid and use your threat sensor as a sort of defence. Infinite lacks more of this variety in gameplay because there's so much choice and not enough boundaries. Many Halo missions of the past started with certain weapons for a reason, and this cannot be present in Infinite because the player can call in their weapons of choice before starting a mission. The lack of weapon usage variety also comes down to weapon balance, which unfortunately took a bit of a hit in Infinite compared to Halo 5. Some guns just aren't worth your time. I don't mind the gun variety in Infinite, but I feel as though we could have utilised more vehicles of the past. The Prowler, Revenant, Falcon, Goshog. I would have thought a more the merrier policy would have been favoured, considering Infinite has an open world, but it seems not. The abilities present are hit and miss, with the grapple shot and repulsor the clear kings. The threat sensor is cool, but ultimately not very useful unless the enemy is invisible. The thruster gets overshadowed by the grapple shot, and the drop wall is, well, completely useless. Might I add that the grapple shot is alongside the custom games browser, as the best thing Tree for Tree has ever done for Halo. As for Infinite's story, well, it's a mess. Story spoilers ahead. Cortana dies off screen. The events preceding Halo 5 are explained through audio logs scattered across the world, and having listened to them, I still don't know what exactly happened. We have a Cortana replacement now, who will probably just be called Cortana, 
We're teased with a new faction that never appears. It feels like nothing happens in this story, and what does take place occurs off screen. It's go here, let the weapon activate this, talk, move on. I cannot advise anyone on how to write a story, but each narrative 343 has presented to us has either been full of exposition and controversial, or downright laughable. We just have to do better. We have a rich universe with a plethora of characters, factions, and locations to utilize. Combat Evolved had the most basic story, with very few characters, and very little to understand, and yet it did quite well. There's also a severe lack of world building when it comes to Infinite, and this ties into the world feeling bland. In Halo games of the past you had lots of marines, vehicles, overhead ships, buildings, etc. All adding to the feeling that you were on a battlefield, and that each side had a place in the scene. With Infinite it's mostly you versus a bunch of ground enemies, and you never feel that scale of an engagement, or that there's more happening beyond the walls of gameplay. It's subtle, but it's a noticeable downgrade on previous entries. Moving on, Infinite doesn't have a level replayer, and typically doesn't support co-op. These are coming, yes, but I shouldn't have to tell you or Tree for Tree that they should be there on day one. There are cosmetics scattered around the world, and I'll get to customization later, but you soon realise that they're not worth picking up. And there's no reward for completing the game, or completing the game on a certain difficulty, or in a certain amount of time. Things like these are just missed opportunities. As for the gameplay loop, which I haven't mentioned yet, it's very good, and can only really be fine-tuned to make it any better. The AI is fun to fight, and the guns are fun to shoot. What more can I say? This is the saving grace of Infinite. The final point I want to make concerning the campaign is capturing the essence or the spirit of Halo. Whether this for you is the dialogue from Sergeant Johnson, the shock of playing as the Arbiter in Halo 2, or the jazz inspired songs that play as you explore New Mombasa in Halo 3 ODST. This is something that we got glimpses of in Infinite, but we need more of it. After my playthrough I wish there was more to remember, but it all felt very banished and very green. It's strongly rumoured that Infinite will have campaign DLC, and if it goes ahead, 343 should, in my opinion, revert to a more open-ended linear design, akin to Combat Evolved. No one would criticise them for doing so, and it would have a positive impact on the experience. Having said that, we've heard next to nothing regarding this. You'd think that if they had such DLC in the works, that they'd tease us about it to get us excited. But no, nothing. There has been a lack of communication from 343 since release, but I'll come to that later. Before I move on to the behemoth that is multiplayer, I want to talk about UI. Often an overlooked aspect when judging a game, UI is incredibly important. Infinite's UI is quite bland and utilises the same stationary imagery. Contrasted with Halo Reach or Halo 2's main menu, and the differences are clear. The multiplayer one in particular annoys me. I remember seeing this during the beta and thought, I do hope this is a placeholder. No, we just have one loading image for the entire game. Again, compare and contrast with those of old. Across the board, the UI struggles to load and display information. There's also a general lack of information in the UI, no sidebar with each gamer tag and emblem, and no pre-game and post-game lobbies to view what mode you're playing, on what map, and the ability to stick with players you just paired up with. And don't get me started on these horizontal scrolling tabs for customization. Typically, the internet has come up with better alternatives already. Good UI shouldn't be noticeable, and yet half my time in Infinite's menus is spent frustrated at its interface. Okay, so let's begin with the basics, the gameplay. I like Infinite's gameplay, how it feels, and how it plays. 
However, having watched Fabian's video, which you should check out, I realised therein lies an issue with the assault rifle and the battle rifle. I'm pretty good at Halo, but felt as though I was getting destroyed at launch, running into rooms and dying instantly. Fabian goes into more detail, but the summary is that the assault rifle is pretty ridiculous when used at its effective range, and the battle rifle is too easy to utilise. Other issues include the gravity hammer lacking gravity, the rocket launcher lacking splash damage, though this may be down to desync, grenades lacking physics, and weapons such as the plasma pistol, pulse carbine, and bulldog being ignored due to their lack of effectiveness. I don't know why the bulldog replaced the classic shotgun. As well, the plasma pistol is now devoid of its EMP effect, making it borderline useless. The radar in Big Team Battle was at a measly 18 meters to begin with. Feedback on this was given during the flights and it wasn't implemented for launch. Staying with the sandbox, we have a major issue in Big Team Battle. Vehicles spawn too infrequently and there is a lack of variety with no set spawns. This applies to weapons too. You know the sword inside the wheel in Zanzibar? Or the Spartan laser on top of the tower in high ground? What about the neutral banshee at the outskirts of Sandtrap? Iconic weapons and vehicles like this remain iconic because in every game we play we see them in the same location. Infinite's big team battle maps change every game so it merely feels like an arena to use the sandbox rather than a set location built for specific encounters. Sticking with big team battle, the score for Slayer is too low considering we now have 8 extra players on the map. Stockpile in its current state is a terrible mode that never excites when it comes up in the rotation. We're missing Assault and all its associated variants, One Flag, Heavies, Territories and Invasion. Having said that, I understand that Territories kind of evolved into Total Control, which is very enjoyable. The big team battle maps themselves are lacking in any sort of variety in their design or location. We have that green forest aesthetic, another green forest aesthetic, and nighttime. Meanwhile, Halo 3 had Sandtrap, a sandy asymmetrical map where each flag spawns on top of a moving elephant which the player can drive and honk a horn. Valhalla is a classic base versus base map that is quite similar to Fragmentation, only better designed and more open. Last Resort, a remake of Zanzibar from Halo 2, which was an asymmetrical attack versus defense style map with a rotating wheel that could be interacted with along with the base defenses. It was set along a sandy beach and urban interior. Standoff, a wide base versus base map set on a missile launch site with interactive bases and plenty of neutral rocks for infantry to fight within. Rat's Nest is a base versus base symmetrical map with a ring road encompassing the map and a neutral tight interior. Avalanche, a remake of Sidewinder, has a snowy setting and arctic stylized vehicles along with man cannons that can be used to traverse the map. Do you now see the difference in map design between an older Halo and Infinite? It's just not good enough. And to make matters worse, we have three big team battle maps and seven arena maps, two of which are more suited to 6v6 or 8v8. The two aforementioned 6v6 maps, Behemoth and Launchside, would be great for 6v6 or multi-team, but they're just too big for 4v4. This leaves us with 5 other maps, and whilst they have a nice variety in location, they are quite boring and uninspired when it comes to design. It's either a 3 lane symmetrical design such as Aquarius and Bazaar, or an asymmetrical box shaped layout such as Life Fire, Recharge and Streets. Again, let me go back to Halo 3 as an example. Guardian, asymmetrical, multiple platforms with an open neutral zone in the middle. The Pit, your classic three lane map. Epithap, a long corridor with outdoor routes to flank enemies, along with multiple gravity lifts. Construct, base versus base except it's top versus bottom, 
with three lifts. Narrows, a long base versus base map with man cannons sending players from one side to the other. No wonder the community is craving new maps, because the selection is poor and too small. Staying with ranked, the ranking system needs major improvements. Effectively, Infinite uses a global matchmaking rating to match players, not just in ranked, but also in social. The game is also extremely punishing for a loss, and barely rewarding for a win. This system is easy to abuse, as players can purposefully lower their kill debt ratio, thus their global matchmaking rating in social, and this can be utilised to match easier opponents in ranked, and thus shoot up the ranks. Why a simple 1 to 50 Halo 2 style system wasn't utilised here, I don't know, but it needs addressing. Desync, melee detection, player collision, cheating. All problems that didn't exist in Halo 4 or in Halo 5, and they exist now. I can't say much here other than sort it out. These are basics when it comes to game design, bug fixing, etc. Having said that, turning player collision off was a decision rather than a mistake, something I cannot comprehend. The other thing that was messed with was player outlines. Typically in Halo, one team is red and the other one is blue. Now each player has their own unique colour, with an outline of your choice highlighting them as a friend or foe, typically blue and red. Admittedly, I have no problem distinguishing enemies when I'm shooting at them. My problem is when they're in my peripheral vision or I bump into them. Sometimes I think they're my teammate or vice versa because the outline is so much harder to see than a full colour. And this was 100% purely a monetization decision because how else could we show off the codings we paid for? Yet again, 343 messed with something that never, ever needed to change. Another small aspect that's missing in Infinite, assassinations. I have a friend who I told to try Infinite at launch, with Halo 4 being his only Halo game to date. With excitement, he asked me, are there assassinations? And I had to tell him, no, but they are coming. No sign of them coming, maybe... 343 3 forgot? Who knows? But again, another missed opportunity. I'm not certain what's worse, the selection of maps or modes. At launch we had Slayer, Oddball, Capture the Flag, Strongholds, Stockpile and Total Control, along with Attrition which then got removed. Six modes. Reach had 13, along with Firefight. We're missing Race, King of the Hill, Juggernaut, Assault, VIP, Infection, Headhunter, Invasion, Ricochet, Breakout, Dominion, Extraction, and Warzone, if you want to throw that in. The only new mode is Total Control, which is just a form of territories. How do you expect players to stay playing when the maps are underwhelming, there's little to no variety of modes, and you present all of this in only a handful of playlists. Right off the bat we need multiple big team battle maps, each varied in its design and location. We need multiple arena maps, again each varied in its design and location. Let's put it at 12 total at launch. It can double post launch. Modes wise we need most of those aforementioned modes and anything new you want to come up with, ideally totalling at least 10 and adding more post-launch. I feel embarrassed that I have to explain this, but that's how bad things are at the moment. Okay, so you've got your weapons, vehicles, abilities, maps and modes. Now you need to arrange them into playlists, at least that's what was typically done. However, the Master Chief Collection brought forward the idea of simply choosing your ideal parameters and searching. We still need ranked playlists, of course, have at least five of them, but social should simply involve as best I can choosing which maps and modes I want. So Halo progression started in 2007, 
when in Halo 3, you could unlock achievements that gave you armor pieces, the most famous of which being Recon. This evolved in Reach to a credit system, play the game, earn credits, spend them on armor as you please. Though some armor pieces required a certain level to unlock. Infinite has a battle pass, and a store, and microtransactions, and armor cores, and a coding system, and events, and less cosmetic content than Halo 5, and it sucks. Like it really, really sucks. The battle pass works like any other. You can occasionally earn free stuff, or spend some money to unlock everything else. The store is where you buy specific cosmetics, at inflated fear of missing out prices. However, if you buy a coating, it's only usable on the armor core you bought it on. The same goes for armor. Oh yes, coatings. Now you can't choose if you want to use, say, green and white, or red and black. Colors are limited to what is there, and whatever can be unlocked. Sorry, I just want to take a moment here and ask what the actual fuck happened here? Who in their right mind thought any of this would work or be consumer friendly? Step 1. Remove all in-game purchases. Step 2. Allow players to customise their colours however they please, primary, secondary, etc. Step 3. Introduce achievement specific cosmetics. A weapon skin that unlocks after you complete the game on Legendary. A helmet that unlocks after you get a perfection in multiplayer. A stance that unlocks after a map you made got 10,000 downloads. I mentioned earlier that Infinite has less cosmetic content than 5. And that's a negative. But the one aspect that I think is positive is with regards to armour. I don't want 200 pieces of armor because then players barely recognize each other and its value. Limit it to say 30 and then each one is more distinguishable and stands out more. Step 4. Introduce a simple leveling system that you progress with XP earned in multiplayer and potentially throughout the game. That's right, a modern AAA first person shooter Developed by a huge company and published by Microsoft in 2021, doesn't have a basic XP based leveling system. What the fuck? 343, let me help you. Just make it as basic as Halo 5's 1152 system. And milestones would give you cosmetics. For example, level 100 could give you a new visor. Step 5. Remove armor cores and allow players to mix and match as they please. Step 6. Reintroduce the emblem editor as it was in previous Halos, and reintroduce all the classic emblems. Step 7. Allow players to view themselves and others in a pre and post game lobby, showcasing their armor and some of their best achievements. Step 8. Remove events as they are a complete waste of time. And by the way, I understand having a few cosmetic items from past games, and especially Reach because that's what the first season is based on, but why is nearly every armor piece ripped from Halo Reach? I mean, I've already grinded for these items 10 years ago, why are you making me do it again? Do you not have your own new cosmetics to share with us? The whole cosmetics and progression debate ties into Infinite being free to play, and a live service model. These two decisions were made to increase profit, and ironically, the game would have made more money if sold at a full retail price with all its content at launch. So much of Infinite's free to play audience has left since release, and I hate to break it to you, but they're not coming back. That in itself is so soul destroying, because Infinite launched in a quiet year where its rivals, mainly Call of Duty and Battlefield, screwed up. Anyway, back to fixing Halo. A cool feature of Reach and 5 were commendations, which were kind of challenges that would reward the player with credits in Reach and XP or cosmetics in 5. They were neat, not necessarily essential, but would give the player another thing to grind for. 
In Infinite, these could reward the player with XP towards our ranking system, or even cosmetics. The current challenge system in Infinite is quite unhealthy for the game. Win two stockpile matches, or kill five enemies with a mangler. Shockingly, this results in players leaving matches that aren't stockpile, and then trying to only use the mangler to get kills. In Reach, these challenges were much more healthy for the game. Kill 100 enemies in matchmaking, or complete this campaign mission with these criteria. There was also no option to trade out a challenge, and definitely no option to pay real money to trade out a challenge. To be honest, this game could be a 10 out of 10, and I'd struggle to come back and play, because of this obscene progression system. Even Halo 5, a game with maybe more problems than Infinite, was engaging enough for me to sink over 20 days into it since 2015. Since Infinite's release, I have around two days of playtime, a third of which was the campaign, and I can't for the life of me play anymore. All because this progression system almost doesn't want me to play. I hate it with every fibre in my being, and if it doesn't change, 343 can add all the content it wants, and Infinite will still suffer immensely. I also want to mention Warzone, Invasion, and Firefight. Whilst not essential to Halo, these modes were large inclusions in their respective games that were very popular. Infinite has no equivalent, and I was shocked to see that 343's baby, Warzone, was not shipping with Infinite. There's so much potential in Warzone, or Invasion's Attack vs Defense Rush style mode, or Firefight's PvE combat, that something like that needs to be present alongside the standard social and ranked multiplayer. Hell, even Halo 4 had Spartan Ops, single player missions that lasted multiple seasons. They weren't very popular, but it's much more than what we have now. I can already hear people asking about Battle Royale. Firstly, we don't know how good such a mode could be. Remember that many games have tried Battle Royale and failed. It's no silver bullet to success. Secondly, if Infinite did launch with a Battle Royale, how would that have taken away from the development of other features? Would we have lost maps, modes, maybe custom games? Who knows? Lastly, I think Battle Royale is a luxury feature. And I believe the best way to go about adding it is to simply add a customizable mode in custom games and let the community build maps in Forge as they do. If it's a huge success, like say Griffball was, sure you could make a fully fledged battle royale, but do not make it a priority, especially over key features. Many have described Infinite as a game that was acceptable at launch but due to its lack of content and updates, has fallen off since. The lack of content since launch has indeed led to an extreme amount of players leaving, and the 6 month gaps between seasons are unacceptable, considering what these seasons give us. Yet, I disagree with this notion that the game was acceptable at launch. It wasn't. I believe we were all just soaking in the new experiences. I said to my friends that this game was maybe an 8.5 out of 10 when it came out, and after two days of playtime since, I realised it's barely a 6. The game doesn't have enough features and has a plethora of poor design choices, and this is true now, back in January, and back at launch. As for 343's approach to seasons and updates, I think we'd be more content with it if we got a complete game at launch. 6 month gaps between content drops aren't absurd in the industry, but considering we're getting 2 maps, some modes that should have been present on day 1, along with co-op campaign, that 6 month gap is unacceptable. And what makes it more frustrating is outside of the terrible events, this game rarely gets updated. Patches that would take other developers weeks, take 343 months. Overall, communication between 343 and the community has been poor, with weeks of radio silence. Fans wondering if their concerns are really being listened to. Even if Infinite was a completely perfect game at launch, had it received the lack of updates it has, its player base would have taken a hit. So what does this hypothetical multiplayer look like? 
It utilises the base infinite gameplay and mechanics. It launches with 12 plus maps and 10 plus game modes, supported post launch, each map unique, well designed and fan favourite game modes all present. It has big team battle maps with consistent weapon and vehicle spawns, Jeff Steiser and the option to turn off personal AI. It has balanced gunplay that meets expectations, utilising every weapon in the sandbox. It has no desync issues, no player outlines, player collision on, little to no cheaters, accurate melee detection and assassinations. It has an abundance of ranked playlists, freedom concerning the social scene and a sprinkling of rotational wacky playlists. It has an engaging, rewarding and consumer friendly progression system with no microtransactions, no battle pass, no armor cores, codings, events or challenge swaps. It has the ability to choose our colours how we please, unlockable armour and cosmetics through achievements, a standard levelling system to track XP, an emblem editor, classic emblems, pre and post game lobbies, a service record to track stats, and cosmetic rewards for milestones. It has a healthy and rewarding challenge system that ties into our XP progression. It has a left of field mode akin to Warzone, Invasion or Firefight that offers a unique experience to that scene in ranked or social playlists. Maybe a battle royale too. Finally it is supported post launch with new maps, modes and cosmetic based challenges and these updates would come every few months along with patches in between. Had infinite launch like this its population would be double triple, quadruple what it is today. However, that's not all. I haven't even begun to talk about community features. What is Halo without its community? By community, I mean the fans, those that engage with the game. Of course, being Halo, there are so many ways to engage with the game outside of campaign and multiplayer. For me, this is the aspect of Halo that 343 never got. They never understood what it meant to play Halo, to share that experience with others in such a variety of ways. Naturally this comes across in their game design. So what community features does a game like Halo require? Well let's continue to analyse Infinite. Custom games, the ability to pick any mode you want, adjust that mode how you please and play it on any map you want, is broken in Infinite. I myself have not had the privilege to test how broken it is, because outside of messing around by myself, I haven't played a single custom game in Infinite due to its lack of community features, but those that have managed to organise play sessions say it doesn't work. Crashing, fails to launch, etc. Again, I sit here expressionless at the thought that such a thing such as custom games doesn't work in a Halo game. How can you think that's okay? Not only that, but many custom game options aren't present. Setting which weapons or vehicles spawn on the map, or enabling players to start with random weapons. I didn't expect this on day one, but we're nearly at the end of the first season and this hasn't been addressed. I seriously doubt this game is solid under the hood. As I mentioned, the custom games browser is alongside the grapple shot as the best thing Tree for Tree has done for Halo. If you want something to encapsulate how inept 343 has been in charge of Halo, then look no further than this. So during Halo 5's life cycle, 343 added a custom games browser, the ability to search for custom games in a server list and join them. Custom games are adored by the community. However, traditionally, you would need to know the right people or have enough friends to engage with them. The custom games browser simply makes this obsolete. It was so good that they added it to the Master Chief collection. And so you say to yourself, well, this is great. It'll be present day one with Infinite. Nothing. So we move forward to April and Tree for Tree are detailing what they learned from the first season. Here's what they have to say with regards to the custom games browser. Custom games browser is something we are deeply passionate about too. And we're happy to say that the team is in the early stages of production for it. So let me get this straight. You guys added a brilliant feature into two of your games and then 
didn't add it into the third. It's now in the quote, early stages of production. A feature you conceived and know was loved by the community is only now in the early stages of production, months after the release of your six year developed game. At any stage, did you guys look at Halo 5 and think, hmm, okay, what did we learn from this game? What worked? What didn't? Did someone just forget to write down the custom games browser? Did the note fall out of his pocket? What are you guys smoking over there? You couldn't make this shit up if you tried, it's absolutely unbelievable. And of course, Forge, the key foundation of community features, is not here at release, or months on from release. In fact, it has no established release date. For the second game in a row, might I add. Though at least five got forged two months after release. For Infinite, it's looking like it's going to be nine months. I've seen the leaks, and it looks like we're eventually getting the most complete forge yet. But lo and behold, it's not launched with the game. Forge is so crucial to Halo and its community, the ability to multiply the set number of maps to infinity is so valuable to all aspects of the game. Maps can enter playlists in multiplayer, they can populate the server browser, they can be used for people to just mess around with in Forge, or create whatever infection, race, slayer, or anything in between map they want. They're used to create clips and screenshots, machinimas, and test out weapons, vehicles, and abilities. Any fun game mode you've played through Halo's history, such as Griffball, Hot Pursuit, Fat Kid, etc., were all born within Forge. They weren't possible without it. It's such an integral and key pillar for Halo, that not having it at release is a killer blow to the community, and severely limits the game's potential. Forge on its own is the tool, yet it needs systems in place to engage with said tool. A file share is essential. Let me access players' profiles through their service record and a search functionality, and download their content. Reach had a section for the most downloaded files, recommended content, and hell, even a tab of screenshots people took of you. Any file should also be accessible from Halo Waypoint, and we could even search and download content from the Halo Waypoint app so it's ready to consume once we hop on. See, once you reintroduce all these aforementioned features, then suddenly YouTubers are producing Forge content. They're making machinimas. You've got people posting their cool screenshots on Twitter or Reddit. People are creating Forge competitions. You've got the montage community doing their thing. You've got artists creating sculptures, MLG players practicing on new maps, clans creating servers, map editors remastering old maps. I can't explain enough how crucial these community features are. They bring everyone together in so many different ways. And I forgot to mention Theater, which, like custom games, is broken in Infinite. Ironically, it was broken in Halo 5 too. It's this lack of care that gives me zero confidence that 343 gets Halo or understands its community. It's hard to imagine that rushing home from school age 10 to play Halo Reach would be the last great Halo launch I'd have experienced. Halo 4 alienated us. The Master Chief Collection was a laughing stock. 5 was one step forward, two steps back, and Infinite was just, well, insulting especially after an agonizing five plus one year wait. All of these shortcomings occurred whilst 343 was in charge of the franchise. Failure after failure, setback after setback. The number of times I saw the community plead in hope, Halo was back, only to be disappointed and let down once again. 343, your trust and respect from us are gone, and we have no confidence in your leadership and abilities anymore. It's come to the point where Halo News greets me with apathy. I can't muster an interest because 
I've been let down for the past decade. The franchise I love more than any other is unrecognisable to me and gives me no satisfaction anymore. The most passionate Halo related thing I've done since Infinite released is written this script. Seeing as 343 is sticking around, firstly they need to issue an apology for the state of Infinite at release. Secondly, they should proceed to attempt to implement as many aforementioned changes as possible in Infinite, overhauling the progression system, injecting community content, and more maps and modes as the highest priorities. Lastly, they should plan their next title, whatever it may be, and do so in an orderly fashion, without farcing around for six years, moving from director to director, idea to idea. Despite the failures, the players that won't come back and the disasters, you still foster a large and supportive community who will love this franchise forever. Listen to them, talk to them, and engage with them. I don't believe that Infinite can ever be the game we'd hope it would be, but I do believe that, eventually, it can make a meaningful step for the franchise in the right direction. I get that it's hard to see that right now, to be brutally honest, I can't see it, but it is possible. But 343, we are done talking. We are done ranting and explaining. We are done reminiscing about the past and lamenting the present. I hope, I plead, that this is the last time you trip over your shoelaces.